Thank you for making it to my backpacking wax appointment. I'm, I'm very glad that you're here. So we're only going to say the name of this company and its trademarked fabric once so that I don't risk annoying anyone's mind and ears. This is the Keb trouser from Fjallraven. And most of the pant is covered in these dark patches and that is their proprietary G1000 fabric. Okay, G1000 sounds like, it sounds like a fabric that was made up in the 2000s as like some marketing slogan, but actually it's not. This fabric has been around since, I think its first use was in 1968 when Ake Norden, I hope I said that right, Ake? Norden made the Greenland jacket, was the first jacket to use this proprietary fabric. I don't know if this is coming up on focus, but that is what the G is. The G in this fabric name stands for Greenland. So that's what we'll call it for the rest of this video. That's pretty easy. So Greenland fabric, which is again, just the darker patches on these trousers. This is a 65% polyester and 35% cotton blend. So cotton, yes. The, the fabric of death on the trail. You actually, I, I bet you have seen, because I know how I have, plenty of very experienced backpackers sporting their Greenland fabric on the trail. So if you've ever hesitated to get a pair of these because it's like, what, it's got cotton in it. Get a pair, hike your own hike. This is definitely used by a lot of professionals and experienced people, even if they never really address it in their videos. One reason why this fabric, even though it does contain 35% cotton, one reason why this fabric passes the muster, so to speak, is because each piece of Greenland fabric that is shipped out by the Arctic Fox comes prepared with a special coating of paraffin and beeswax, which is aptly named Greenland wax. If it has the Greenland fabric on it anywhere, it's going to already come prepared with a layer of their Greenland wax. I don't know how much. I couldn't find information on that. And that is what we're doing today. We're going to be applying some wax to these. We're going to winterize the shit out of these things. I actually have one pair of green and I have a pair of blue ones. So the green ones, what I plan to do is I'm going to save those for late spring to early winter. Whatever layer of wax that's already on those, I'm happy with that. For the blue ones, I've selected these for late winter to early spring, somewhere in that time frame. And these are the ones that we're going to wax today. It's going to get the best, the best wax job it's ever seen. So Greenland wax is 90% paraffin and... 10% beeswax. And this is actually still made in Sweden, handmade in Sweden, in the same town where it's always been made. So pretty trippy. You can get this for, I think 90 grams is, depending on where you're looking, it's like 10 bucks. Sometimes it goes up to 20 bucks. Be careful where you're buying it. Apparently they're having a supply chain issue right now. So I got mine from a local store and all they had was the, the bag one. They have, it's like a little travel bag. It's all I could get a hold of. So that's what we've got. If you came to this video for, for like an accurate how-to, I highly recommend you stop watching this and I will put a link in the description of this video directly to the Arctic Fox and how they are suggesting that you wax your garments with the Greenland fabric. This is not a how-to video. I'm just going to demonstrate how I plan on winterizing my pants. I have a particular idea on how I'm going to get these bad britches ready for winter. You wouldn't be waxing this fabric. This is like a polyester stretch fabric. It might have, it might be a nylon polyester. I'm not sure about that. But this cotton polyester part that you can wax, it actually is the same fabric on the inside. So my plan is I'm going to do four layers of wax on the inside of the pant as far as this fabric goes up. And then on the outside, and I'm only going to focus on the on the leg section of the pants. On the outside, I'm going to do seven layers, which is a lot of layers. That's really, really intense. I guess like once I take these off in, in my tent, I guess instead of having to find a place to hang them, I can just like stand them up in the corner somewhere or something. They're going to be pretty stiff. Well, we'll see. I don't know, actually. About four layers of light wax. In, in repeated session and letting that cure and then getting some water on there and just letting it uh, do its thing and, and seeing how long it takes to seep in. About four layers 
applied the right way will take roughly three hours for some water to eventually seep in. So if I do four layers on the inside, seven layers on the outside, they're going to be they're going to be super crispy, but hopefully that will give me a good barrier. I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm doing, to be honest. We're going to learn together. Okay, let's do this. So there are three readily available to most people ways to put the wax into the pants to actually melt it into the fabrics. The first one is an iron. I really like my iron, so I'm definitely not going to be using that for any wax today. Second option is a heat gun. This is the method that we're going to use today. It's, it's kind of a loud heat gun, so I don't know how that's going to come up on film. We'll figure that out later. And the last one, I don't have an example of. Oddly enough, it is like a uh, fresh home-baked pie. And you just take the tin and you take your little mittens and you just move the tin over your pants and melt the wax in. And that uh, that's another option. That's your third option right there. I don't have a pie, so we're not going to be doing that today. We're going to use the heat gun. Okay, actually, the... The real third option, but actually it's more like a fourth option because the pie will work. And, and the reason why you can buy this in a travel case is you can boil some water, you know, in a pot and stuff like that. You can just take the pot and rub it on the pants. That's another option. Like if you need to wax your pants on the go, like if you're in the field and you need to do that, I, I don't imagine anybody's done that since the seventies. Maybe people still do, but I like the pie idea better. So the idea with this is you don't want to, I'm turning this into a how-to video and it shouldn't be, but this is what I know so far in my research. You don't want to put a really, really heavy layer of wax that's to encompass all the wax layers that you want to put. You're just going to put a heavy one because you really want this winterized or weather resistant. Do several passes of light layers of wax, melt one of those in, let it dry, and then, and then do another one or, or I guess let it cool down, do another one. That's the most effective way to get a good layer on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down a light layer here. I mean, light is subjective, but once you start seeing it, you know, get super, super chalky, that's about good. And you wanna get everywhere. You wanna get, you know, that's why you got your edges on here. You wanna get the threads and you want to get in those creases. It's okay. It's going to melt. It, it looks like you're, it likes, it look, kind of looks like you're making a mess of your pants here. But you will see once we get the, once we get the heat gun going here, this is all going to disappear pretty quickly. So I've got it set for like medium heat. Low heat with the iron is, is what's mentioned as preferred. I'll do medium heat with the heat gun. I can obviously, you know, move that closer or, or pull it further back to regulate it. So I'll keep it on medium for now. And let's, let's see what we got. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys can see that. I think with this, with this type of thing, going slower is better. You know, really take your time to melt this in. Don't rush the process. You don't want it too hot and you don't want it dripping or anything like that. Really take your time with this, kind of, kind of craft it. And obviously if there's any spots with like nylon, these pants have a little nylon cinch at the very bottom. Just be careful with that. Don't hold the heat gun over something like that. You get a hot spot and, and possibly burn it. And there we go. 
first layer of wax. If you're nervous about doing this, take your pants to an Arctic Fox near you and they actually will do this for you. I think it's kind of cool to, to do your own thing and give it a shot. Okay, so that's one layer. I need to keep track of this. Good thing I'm super good at math. I actually never passed math in school. Never passed math or English in high school. Now I'm in charge of multi-million dollar supply chains, which is hilarious. I did a continuation school out in Arroyo Grande, Central Coast area. And one of the ways that I got math credits at that continuation school, because they knew I wasn't going to be able to do it, is uh, they rented me out a, a like an actual camcorder, like this was 2003. And my, my job was to make some sort of film, film something, be artistic. So I walked around school and I made the Zach Major show. And I don't remember much about the show, but that's, that's what gave me my math credit so I could graduate from high school, continuation school. Not that anybody asked. So I am noticing, I have, I have tested this out once. I just wanted to see what it was like a little bit before I did this video, so I'm not completely making this up. Um, and I am noticing that where I'm applying the wax and where we're getting our, our layer here, it's getting darker, the fabric's darker. It's not bad. It's just, uh, it's a thing. It's happening. That is layer number two. Oh. Stay here. That's layer number two. And it's, yeah, it's considerably darker. Ah, uh, yeah. It's not a big deal. So that's layer number two, and I can definitely feel that it's starting to get like, like that kind of feeling when you starch something. It's actually not that hot. I was, I was afraid that I would have to wait longer for this to cure. Okay, so this will be the third layer. I'm going to do one more layer for the purposes of this video. I'm not going to drag you through seven layers. So we'll do one more layer together, and then we're going to do a water test. We'll actually, let's, let's pour some water on this pair after we have the layers, because we already looked at the green pair which comes preset with some wax from the Arctic Fox. We know what that looks like, looks pretty good, but let's see what this looks like after seven layers. I wonder if there's gonna be any kind of considerable difference. It is kind of hard to get into the, the crooks, crooks, cooks and nannies. What's it called? Cooks and crannies, a hard to get places. Threads is where the water so on anything in the outdoors is going to have water ingress. Is that the proper term? Anything with threads is going to have the, the first point where water is going to go in. So I've got, got quite a bit on the actual threaded areas so that we can try and avoid that. This layer may have been a little too thick. Got a little carried away. I just realized that I actually am a little disappointed in something.
Well, that's good enough. I thought that this was gonna have like a really nice odor. We're melting this wax and this this paraffin and beeswax. I thought it would have a pleasant odor, but uh, I, don't, I don't smell anything. Okay, so that was the third layer. I can feel a little bit on my hands a little bit, so maybe that layer was a little too thick. I'm gonna apply four more layers. I'm not gonna drag you guys through that, and we will be back with that right now. Okay. Whoa. All right, that is seven layers right there. I don't know if you can see any difference. Okay, let's see. Here's this pant leg, and then my, to your left, this one right here, this is the one with the wax on it. This is no wax. Is there a difference? Can you tell? To me, it looks a little darker. What do you guys think? Um, when I got around layer four, layer five, I started to notice, and I can still kind of see it, there's there's like these darker areas of the fabric. And it, if this was a light green, Greenland fabric or something like that, or tan, those streaks uh, might not look good. I don't know how that would show up. Because these are dark pants, it's not that big of a deal, but maybe it maybe I didn't let the coats dry long enough in between applications. There may be something there. It may just be the type of wax that this is. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm not gonna worry about it on these. Now that we have the seven layers on the outside and the four layers on the inside, which I did as well, let's do the water test and, and kind of see what that looks like. Let's just see how this compares to what you're just gonna pick up out of the store. Okay, moment of truth. We'll see what we got. Do a couple slow drops. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's a, a slightly different beading effect. It seems to be running off just fine. Actually, I forgot to mention, I actually did put a few layers of wax into the zipper area. I can see that some is getting caught in the zipper area, but, you know, you're not going to be laying down. Well, you could be. Okay, let's see if... Does it just kind of... Whoa. I mean, maybe I didn't give it long enough to dry. I do see that some is starting to seep through, which is very interesting. For the most part, it's beating off, but I do see some seeping through. So that's, that's very interesting. I wonder if I didn't let the wax dry long enough in between sessions, or maybe I didn't let it dry long enough before doing this water test. We'll see. Okay, so I've let this sit for, eh, it's been like five hours or so. I just, I wanted the, I think the wax really needs to settle in after you apply it. Just really let the pants cool down and let it settle in. So I reset, let these, let these chill for a little while, and I wanna see if it looks any better getting a little bit of water on here. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a lot better. I see one spot. This is weird. There's like a couple spots where it's where it's sticking and I don't know what that means. Besides that, it looks pretty good. It's getting stuck over by the zipper a little bit. That's going to be a, a problem spot, but... Yeah. No bad. Oh shit. Getting water everywhere. I think that's gonna be just fine. How it's gonna hold up to like snow sticking to this and stuff, I've I don't know. We'll see. But I think I think I'm pretty happy about that. That was my very first wax job, so I'm glad I made it through okay. Greenland wax, is it worth it? What do you guys think? I'm hoping that the blue pants that have been waxed to death at this point will withhold several hours of, you know, like a foot of snow or whatever with some gaiters. Do I, do I even need gaiters? I'm really interested to see how this turns out, how this is going to turn out just walking through the snow. You can get this from the Arctic Fox directly. I think you can get this at REI. Be careful not to buy the travel pack. I'm seeing a lot of prices for the travel pack and in the 90 gram bar, which is the one that we use today, I see that oftentimes for some reason, the same price. 
don't get the travel pack one it's or or the travel size it's very very small get yourself the 90 gram bar if you can but yeah thank you guys for watching the video i hope that was fun something different i will see you guys on the next one all right cheers bye